I'm revisiting a video I made a few years ago for an RGB mod on a security monitor that I really only glossed over. And an obligatory warning that working on CRTs can be dangerous and if not lethal. You should not open up, modify or fix any CRT without having good understanding of safety precautions. I'm not responsible for any harm or damage done to anyone or anything. After all, this video is just a visual diary of my progress. So without further ado, I present the TVS CM14 DNA. I was out growing the custom arcade cabinet that I purpose built in 2013 to store all my retro game consoles. So in 2019, I decided to change direction how I wanted to consume retro gaming, favouring ODEs, flash carts, FPGA gaming and emulation. So I made the decision to only keep the consoles and games that were near and dear to me and to sell the rest of my physical collection at a gamers market. Also access to my needs were these CRTs, one of which was a 14 inch security monitor made by Taiwan Video Systems. Dressed as a PVM with composite and S-video inputs that supports PAL and NTSC. This was before I knew how to modify CRTs, so I set out to reacquire the monitor to see if unlocking the power of RGB could elevate this monitor to PVM status. And my persistence paid off when I found one that was unboxed and new old stock on the other side of the country. I gave the seller detailed packing instructions for a safe arrival on my doorstep. All at my expense, of course, but they ignored my request to which I received a busted monitor with a smashed front plate and power switch, cracked bezel and broken solder joints. But with a hot glue gun and a soldering iron, the monitor was nursed back to working condition. This was manufactured in April of 2005 and runs in any region of the world on 100 to 240 volt AC. The tube is a Changhua made in Malaysia. Because this is marketed as a security monitor, there's no RF tuner, so the chassis is nice and simple. So even with its all metal exterior, it's deceptively lightweight to carry using the side recessed handles. The video chip is a TDA8361, and the data sheet showed RGB inputs on pins 22 to 24, which traced to three capacitors connected to ground. The OSD was independent to these inputs, as it still displayed after I isolated the video chip from the capacitors. So this was going to be an easy mod, no muxing, just direct RGB injection. I added 75 ohm termination and 0.1 microfarad filter caps to the RGB inputs. And staying faithful to the pro monitor look, I initially installed BNC connectors with a step drill, much easier than filing a SCART socket out of the metal case. But I eventually got tired of using a BNC to SCART adapter and came up with a plastic project box instead, mounting it directly onto the back and inserting the ribbon cable through a small hole to directly connect to the BNC inputs, as well as balancing left and right audio to the mono speaker. And having sync in and out through the composite video BNC connectors means you don't need a breakout video cable for PlayStation 1 and 2 light gun support. Pin 21 on the video chip needs 0.9 to 3 volt for it to switch into RGB. The pin read 0.3 volt in circuit and adding a pull up resistor raised it to just over 2 volt. Sync gets tapped into the composite input, so although it looks like a pro monitor, you've got to treat it like a consumer TV, so no sending TTR level C sync. Now for the all important comparison to see how far this CRT can be pushed to pro monitor glory. Here's the Sega Saturn running in composite, S-video and RGB. TVS advertises the TV line count at more than 400 and I know I'm comparing Shadow Mask to Aperture Grill and ignoring the dot pitch. But the PVM 14N6 is a 500 line monitor and the scan lines on the TVS aren't as prominent. So if it's meant to be more than 400, I'd be calling it 401. I also have this arbitrary rule that if you divide the TV lines by the screen size in inches and the number is above 30, you'll see some scan lines without having to put your nose to the screen. So if we say 401 TV lines divided by 14 inches, 
which gives a ratio of 29, then this kind of holds up. Apart from the slight shimmering dot crawling composite video and the lack of dithering in RGB, S Video really is the best of both worlds. Dithering takes advantage of chroma demodulation to produce shading, more color depth, and transparency effects. But for RGB, this isn't translated so well, displaying more like an organized grid of dots. Dither me timbers. Sonic's waterfall on the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis is the most reference use of such tricks, where composite video blends each water droplet to give the illusion of a transparent running waterfall. But the magic of dithering gets revealed in RGB, and for Team RGB, you can have best of both worlds with the adaptive composite blending option in some Mr. FPGA cores. Certain 2D assets retain the intended transparency and blending effects without compromising the clarity of RGB video. It's not universally optimized as you can see from Sonic CD's intro, where the moving clouds cause areas of the overlapping gold in the foreground to crawl, instead of displaying as independent assets when composite blending is turned off. The plastic around the buttons got a little toasty and warped from the hot glue. There's two buttons that instantly call out brightness and contrast adjustments, otherwise just to make a volume adjustment, you need to navigate through the basic OSD. Sharpness, color and tint only apply to composite and S-video. Otherwise I've got no idea if there's a hidden service menu to adjust more options. So when I did tweak the geometry, it was a scavenger hunt to find the all-important potentiometers for horizontal and vertical size and position. It barely needed any tweaking though, and it produces a straight grid and really vibrant colors as you'd expect from a brand new tube. Compared to the curved top of most consumer sets, I much prefer these cubes for stacking consoles on top, and the solid case makes them perfect for vertical gaming. You should avoid rotating a powered CRT because it can mess up purity and require good degaussing to set it straight, but I'm just doing it here for the purpose of demonstration. Rotating left completely alters the colors, regardless if it was rotated while off. So it looks like it's only suitable for clockwise rotation, which means I'll have to flip the screen in the arcade's dipstick settings on the mister when I'm playing in tape mode. <laughs> I always thought that the word tate was short for rotate. Makes sense, right? Rotate? Well, it's actually derived from the Japanese word tateru, which means to stand up. As blasphemous as this is, I wanted to give the monitor some flair with a Sony badge. I've got to thank DJ Cal for this tip where the Sony badge logo on PVM and BVMs are the same size as those used on most Sony speakers. So you'll need the thinnest flathead screwdriver or spudger to gently get underneath and pry the three little plastic connectors on the back of the badge from the grill. And as you can see, it's a one-to-one -one match to give it that PVM look. And it did fool some of my friends, even if it's like that saying putting lipstick on a pig. The dead ringer that it's in fact not a Sony just by looking at the tube is that 99% of Sony's tubes are aperture grills, which only curve horizontally like a toilet roll, whereas shadow masks like this one here also curve vertically. Overall, I'm glad I could reacquire this set to flesh it out as a budget RGB monitor. So did the RGB input essentially turn this into a PVM? Well, you've got to understand that PVM is Sony's branding of their professional monitors, and it often gets misused as an umbrella term for all professional monitors, including brands like JVC, Panasonic, Ikigami, and Barco, to name a few. So then what makes a CRT a pro monitor? Is it the metal shell, BNC connectors, no RF tuner, intended for use in the medical and film industry, and to a lesser extent, security? These are all somewhat debatable, and although they generally have these things in common, one thing is for sure that separates a pro monitor from a consumer CRT, and that is their superior horizontal resolution. So with a 14 inch tube and approximately 401 TV lines, sleek metal case, versatility in 50 and 60 Hertz composite and S video, the TVSC M14 DNA performs like a no nonsense, finely tuned consumer CRT 
with the industrial aesthetics of a pro monitor. Thanks all for watching and happy gaming.